Hello, same name, different game, universe. You know we're on the road to WrestleMania, and it's high time that Joey Pink made his debut here on Same Name, Different Game, Guy Den. I think it's time to talk about some weird wrestling games, and this time, we're talking about an NES prototype, unearthed in 2019 for a WCW game that no one even knew existed. Let's start with the background. On November 21st, 1988, Ted Turner purchased controlling interest in Jim Crockett Promotions, which had been broadcasting wrestling on his TBS Superstation for years by that point. The initial idea was to change the name to the Universal Wrestling Corporation, or UWC, but that was quickly pushed aside in favor of taking the name of one of Crockett's most popular television shows, World Championship Wrestling, and WCW as we knew it was born. And WCW always seemed a little behind WWF when it came to licensing and extending their brand. While WWF had four, count them, four NES games alongside five Game Boy games, four Super NES and Genesis games, and even two games on the Game Gear, WCW had one NES game, one Game Boy game, one Super NES game, and zero on the Genesis or Game Gear. Well, now it appears they had two NES games, because last year, NES collector and enthusiast Archon1981 purchased a prototype cartridge from a former Nintendo employee, and on that slab of plastic, silicon, and metal, a game bearing the Universal Wrestling Corporation name, with a 1989 copyright date. It was developed by Thinking Rabbit, best known for popular puzzle game Sokoban, and set to be published by SETA best known, if I'm being honest, for Lost NES Urban Legend Come Urban Reality Bioforce Ape. And if you're not familiar with that, you might know him from a handful of games that did come out based on public domain properties like Tom Sawyer, The Wizard of Oz, and Nosferatu. So what is this? Is it a jabroni like so many 80s wrestling games? Or is it a hidden champion whose legacy has been unfairly erased from the official title history? Well, I gotta tell you, same name, different game maniacs, it's more the former than the latter. But just the same, it's not the worst wrestling game on the NES. The most interesting aspect here is the roster, which includes some faces that are downright uncommon when it comes to video games. Let's run it down. The Road Warriors, Hawk and Animal. The Stinger. The Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Jimmy Jam Garvin. The Midnight Express, Stan Lane and Bobby Eaton. And finally, Barry Windham. Now, Windham has made a handful of game appearances over the years, and Bobby Eaton managed to get into WCW Mayhem about a decade after this, but Jimmy Jam Garvin and Stan Lane have never appeared in a released video game that I could find. When it comes to gameplay, I gotta tell ya, it's not a terrible game. A little clunky, but the majority of games based on our great sport for Nintendo's classic Juggernaut are a little clunky. This one falls into that mold you know, and maybe you love it, button mashing to win grapples. The only thing the Radiant One wasn't totally able to get a grip on is how to determine which move I was doing. In games like this, it's usually hold the direction and mash a button, but this game doesn't give any indication of reversals, at least I don't think it does. So it was hard to tell if I was failing my grapple, getting reversed, or if the button combinations I was trying just don't do anything. Eventually, I figured out some combinations that yielded good results with various wrestlers. But the problem then became, it was just like a Brock Lesnar match. I was just spamming the same move over and over again, and that ain't really fun. Movement also doesn't feel great. It's not on the level of WWF WrestleMania for the NES, but let me tell you, moving up and down feel especially sluggish, and getting in the right position to climb the turnbuckle, let alone tag your partner? Forget about it, same name, different game maniacs. In fact, I couldn't figure out how to tag my partner at all. 
though it may well have been I just couldn't quite position my wrestler correctly. When compared to the WCW game we got, it feels a bit easier to control with a less merciless AI opponent. I mean, the computer players in the released game from FCI make you feel like Kofi Kingston defending his title against Brock Lesnar on that first Fox Smackdown episode, to the point that it mostly just ain't fun. And while the unreleased game isn't exactly a revelation like some of us hoped it might be, I would honestly rather play UWC than World Championship Wrestling. And beyond that, come on, it's just an interesting find. Who would have guessed that there was an unreleased WCW game from this long ago that no one even knew about, that was never previewed by a single game magazine of the day or mentioned in an old wrestling sheet? And on that note, if you're a wrestling fan, you really should give it a spin. See some guys who never made it into other games think about what could have been. And as for me, well, you know, SNDG stirs, I've got to get ready for the 10th annual Same Name Different Game WrestleMania special. So I'll see you again soon. And in the meantime, just remember... I'm Joey Pink, and the pleasure was all yours. <laughs>Hey folks, it's Joe. Thank you for watching my pro wrestling counterpart talk about this unreleased game. If you dug what you saw, do the stuff. Like, subscribe, comment about your favorite WCW game, hit the bell, all of that junk. But if you really dug it, consider supporting the shows on Patreon. You'll see your name here with these cool people, get early access, and more. If you want more wrestling, the video on the left is the Fire Pro Wrestling episode, which I am honestly still very happy with, and the one on the right is last year's WrestleMania special on ECW Hardcore Revolution.